right, you're very welcome along. It's Friday night's off the ball, and we've got a full house because it's all Ireland hurling final weekend. Uh, Willow Callan, Larry Burrs here. Larry, Will, how are you? Hanging on. Was Willow done who earlier this week? Upgraded to my real nickname again. Oh, okay, that was on purpose. Middle of slight tangent. No, it was not. Joe Malone goes, Will O'Donoghue's here to my uh, right. All right. <laughs> Very impressive that... Um, I guess he played six on Sunday as well, yeah. Exactly, yeah. He's shown up in all on the final weekend. Michael McCarthy, how are you? Hi, Jer. Uh, you had a perfectly normal reaction on uh, on Twitter too. Uh, have you already done this bit, sorry? Or have you been on air since Ireland played in the World Cup? Talking about you. <laughs> what? What are you talking about? No, I wasn't. I was at a, a certain road show last night. All right, okay, yeah, yeah. Perfectly uh, <laughs> took took with good grace RTE's failings at the um, of the World Cup with the sound. Okay. Yeah, I've calmed down a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> bit of a shambles, let's face it. It was. It was an absolute shambles. Omni shambles, I think it was described as in the show last night. Yeah. yeah. The other game TV in Ireland, license. The other game in Ireland's group not been on TV this morning was a bit odd as well, wasn't it? I know it was early, but like... 3 a.m. or something, wasn't it? Surely you'd have some Ireland fans who'd be interested in watching that at three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> it was I think most the, of us were in bed around that. It time. was on the player, and they, they had, somebody said that they were releasing. Oh, we had record number of uh, views in the players. That's because I counted for five of them, and it didn't work for me. In yeah, the I was going to say the player, which works all the <laughs> time. I watched, I watched ten ads, <laughs> and it didn't work for me. So, but you keep counting those those numbers. That's a perfectly legitimate figure. Sounds like you're the one annoyed, Jer. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm okay. I'm, I'm rationally, coldly bringing it up uh, 24 hours later. Uh, Shane Hannan's also here. Uh, Shane's gloating because he's in the lead in our quick picks, and that's what we're going to do now. I did. I didn't bring this up on um, on our breakfast show uh, at any point during the week, Shane, because it slipped my mind. But you just need a chant. A man and chant. Great fans, but the chant was Monaghan, Monaghan. Yeah, yeah, I know. And it's a hin at the end. Is that the official Monaghan 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 Yeah I suppose it's Monaghan the, It's the colloquial pron- pronunciation And I looked at, I, The pronunciation Totally fine It's just that It's kind of like It sucks the air Out of the stadium A little bit But like It's not particularly thrilling You're like Yeah they're, yeah, This is getting me going here Monaghan Well like Monaghan. It's better than Stand up for the boys in blue Which is a it's soccer not. chant It's not It's not better uh, it's not. What is, what is Kildare, What's Kildare's chant I don't know I mean Kildare Kill That's there. most See, counties Monaghan, are just yeah, kind of Monaghan like. gets ahead of every other county because we have three syllables. So if you start going kill there, we will outdo you with our Monaghan because everyone hears the hen. I like oh. the one, the one syllable ones are good though. Like we could often get into there is a, there is a kind of a clear 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 and it builds a bit. That's good. Like and the tip one is obviously famous. Awfully, awfully. Do fall your order than awfully. Folly. No, ooh, folly, ooh, folly. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Oh, right. Well, yeah, good one. That one works. Long time since we've well. had awfully people in a, yeah. Yeah, yeah, in a match. Uh, <laughs> in a match, yeah. I think we all remember the chance in Carlo this year when we won the Leinster under 20 final. That's true, yeah. yeah. That was a good crowd. Nice. You're right. Cork sing rebels, rebels. Uh, they don't do Cork They don't do Cork brutal, at all. Aren't they? They're not great. They're not great. They're brutal. But it doesn't, it doesn't help. Like when, you know, games in the melting pot. Like, uh, do Galway sing... Go with no that. way That's all they do as well Do they not do the <laughs> yeah. Do they not do the fields of That's an eye Ooh, oh, I don't think so I don't, You don't really hear songs do you? It's more just like Quick chants What's wrong with this Why can't we sing What are we scared of Yeah I think, Why are we so repressed I think we're too It's, it's Catholic guilt It's also nerves I think modern fans Were, ner- were very nervous They were, they were like, yeah. It's tough to sing When you're nervous um, yeah, Maybe you're more into it Than the, the football fans Who are just there to sing mm-hmm. I haven't seen those videos Of the um, Of the, like the terraces Of like You know The hardcore ultra fans In like Premier League games And stuff like that It feels like They're just like There's a determination To have the atmosphere Which is great in itself But it's sort of Almost irrelevant To what's happening On the pitch Whereas Well like, that's because The game is an expression Of their identity yeah, And so Living and dying by what's happening on the field and well, I, t- I, 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 I don't think it's about living and dying uh, I, I was talking about this I've been reading that book The Football Men um, which is an amazing uh, series of essays about football at the end of the 60s and it has convinced me that like football for that group and that generation was actually just about being in, in company and your sport being a representation of who you are. And so I think that's to do with the like the, the stuff that happens on the pitch, obviously, when it goes well, it's great, but when it doesn't go well, uh, it doesn't stop you being in the moment of being part of the group who are there. It's, it's a, yeah, yeah, and that's why there's, that's why it's the chanting and singing can be so organized at times, yeah. Yeah. You can't imagine GA fans meeting up in a pub like soccer fans do and, and deciding on the chance and the wording of the chance and which chance they're going to go with. And you know, I, I can't see it happening. Do you know, because a lot of the GA crowd are just. Well, because there used to only be one game a year. 
Well, the sales that like yeah. and, uh, you know, sure. Now that there are more games, maybe we should. Yeah, maybe yeah. something we should get onto. Get a, Tommy's been talking. Would about you like this. a Farney Army? Yeah, we should actually. <laughs> Surely Farney Army yeah. in an English accent makes perfect sense. Well, Gordon Manning did a piece where he went to the hill and he was talking about a Monaghan chant, which I did not hear. I I couldn't. We couldn't hear it where we were. The Farney Army one. I, no, the no, Farney Army, which is pretty simplistic in itself. But you're looking, I'm, I'm open to suggestions. Uh, right, so it is a lap of honour for Shane because this is nearly out of reach in terms of the quick picks. We've been doing it every week. Shane is on 25 points, Mick and uh, Larry Burke, 21. Uh, oh, no, we, we've had one back last week. If we keep yeah. shifting the goalposts, it's not over. Yeah, OK. Yeah. So just to grandfather in a little bit of excitement <laughs> at the end, we always knew that there was going to be super bonus points on offer for the big games. Yeah. It's like the All-Stars. The, basically, anything you've done up to this point doesn't really matter. Uh, last week's scores were Shane got two points, Mick and Will got three points. Nothing that means anything, but uh, Shane... Picked with his heart and picked Monaghan. I wasn't here with well, that. I wanted to correct. make it interesting. Yeah, yeah, fair play to you. Do you know, yeah, I was leading by so much. I was like, I'm going to go with Monaghan. I have the freedom to go with Monaghan at that stage. And still, I'm still cruising. What is this made-up convoluted scoring system? Somebody explain it to me. So a, you get a point for the pick as you do all year and then you get an extra point. We pick basically the winners and I think draw comes into it today. It hasn't any other time because we had on the day winners. But you have a one to three points uh, victory margin, a four to six point victory margin or a seven plus. So you bonus pick point. one of the three of them, you get a bonus point if you get the, obviously the first one right. Uh, Joe Canning was predicting... Limerick are the better team. Limerick going to have too much, but also talking about a draw last night. Was that? I wonder was he trying to keep both sides happy? But splinters, was, uh, splinters in his arse from sitting on the fence. Well, uh, oh, he, he I actually know. went there early. It was like the opposite of sitting on the fence yeah, in yeah. a way, wasn't it? I know he, he, he straight out. neck out for it. Like yeah. mm. his newspaper article, I think, has gone for a close. Yeah, game to be fair, going for a draw is not sitting on the fence. Uh, to be fair, it's it's actually going for something. So. Yeah, I I uh, I think Dublin Kerry's going to be a draw. I think that we'll have a replay. Place. It should be two weeks Start later that season. on a Saturday <laughs> and we'll get uh, in, in, all the way into the middle of August but this one uh, okay so what's going to happen Will your predi- oh, sorry the convoluted scoring system do you want me to, do you want me to start many, to make it interesting so you know oh, and we were going to add a man of the match weren't we for so how many bonus points do you get for two points for man of the match day two points for the correct oh, man I of the match oh I haven't been told about this the man of the match is oh, look, well, we, just, we made this grandfathering in all sorts of rules and so sorry the, the, the scoring margin is worth how many points one as well if you get okay, it right, so one yeah. if you get the correct scoring margin one if you get the correct winner and two points if you get the man of the match should throw in a point for who wins the toss there lads go on I should that would be ridiculous Shane yeah. and what colour shirts will yeah. they wear oh geez, we know that one already it would be wouldn't it ridiculous yeah uh, so right. no Declan Hannon we know that we'll obviously talk more about this the rest of the show uh, all hurling tonight I think <laughs> we, might, we might squeeze in a bit of coy gig but other than that um, so we know Declan Hannon's not there and other than that are both unchanged really from the semi-finals aren't they? Yeah it's only just a few positional switches but basically it's the 15 that took the pitch for the two semi-finals with the big caveat that David Blanchfield is still a doubt even at this point on Friday when he's named to start so looks like he's got a chest or a rib injury coming out of the Clare game which I think a lot of people didn't pick up on straight after the game but his training has been restricted since so I wouldn't be surprised if he gets replaced ahead of throw in by who? I'm not I'm not 100% sure what like way they're the most ideal position for Kilkenny given they're already down Mikey Carey in that like in wing back and yeah and Blanchard's been really good this yeah. summer. Uh, he kind of carried his league form from last year into it. And then like, Limerick have shown their hand, but I would be mindful that when we spoke to Nash two weeks ago, I was saying to him, the wall has been put up in the half-back line. Gerard Hegarty hasn't played for whatever it was, in like six or seven years at wing-back. And then Gerard Hegarty tugs out, and you see him training with the forwards just before the game starts, and it was very clear that Willow Dunne, who was going to drop back in, as people had suggested beforehand. So I guess the only thing is, Mick, they have signposted this Hannon injury so far out by making that statement to say, that he was a big risk for the semi-final that if Hannon doesn't come back in as one of the potential changes for Sunday as a standby player they have already gone through a game without him and changed the system around already yeah okay. I, I don't see him playing I think that's Shane okay. you have to go first uh, just to make it interesting so the yeah. lads know what I'm going for uh, I'm going to let the lads um, I should point out that Shane's been on a, a tour a hurling tour of Ireland getting his PhD in, in hurling knowledge from some of the 
the best minds that have ever talked about the game literally a hurling man now I yeah think. all like, it took was a trip to Kilkenny and Limerick for the weekend unbelievable like yeah in Kilkenny when you're sitting down with like Eddie Kerr is getting all the nods Eddie Kerr is in his early 80s and still walking through Langton's like he's just oh, yeah. getting the nods from everybody. He was knocking Langton's. over 65. Yeah. Oh, right. It's just the place to do it, you know. You have to get your steak. Yeah. Oh, I, I, I got a beef burger. Beef burger from Eamon Langton, which I was very appreciative of. Shout out to him. Um, sat down with him as well. Sat down with Owen Larkin in, in Langton's and then went uh, to the uh, village. Uh, sorry, um, which Langton did you meet? Uh, Eamon, who is the, the father, father. Right. Eddie is running it at the moment. And his uncle... Hurled with Laurie Marr. Jim, yeah, Jim yeah. Langton. I mean, right. so there you go. You did. He was properly steeped in the history of the game this oh week. Oh yeah, completely. And then um, down to Eamon Cregan. Ah, down to Cregan and, and into Joe Quaid's gaff to watch the women's football match as well. And uh, uh, it was. And then Hammy Dawson, who's a Limerick super fan. It was just an amazing trip. And uh, I, yeah, I'm a hurling person now. Well, decided. Good Ma- job. Man in the hurling county show. We won the Laurie Marr this year. So there you go. Let's spread the and that's kind of what, that's kind of what Martin Fogarty was talking about when I was at, at his house. Do you know the, those counties that have nothing. And he hasn't been replaced. No. I don't really understand that. I'm not really sure what they're doing. Fermanagh has one senior hurling club. Like, they have a few, maybe four or five juvenile assist setups as well or elsewhere in the county. They have one. Like, there's some counties that it's just a famine. Like, even to set up a league or matches, it's impossible. Martin Fogarty interview if you want to see all, all that chat. Uh, the lads are going to probably go fall at Limerick, I'd imagine here, and rightly so. Four in a row chasers. Uh, they're a little less confident maybe this year than they were last year. Definitely. Uh, I'm going to... so. The Kenny strength and depth has improved. You have Buckley, Walter Walsh, Richie Hogan, Billy Drennan. Um, look, everyone is talking about the intensity of this Limerick team, and that's fair. But I think the Kilkenny intensity that they showed in that Clare semi final was something to behold as well. Um, 10 of their 15 points in the first half came from turnovers. It's something that it, very Limerick esque that we see turning the ball over quickly, getting a score. Um, if TJ can have a game like he's had this se- this season so far, and if Owen Cody can do the same, I- I'm I'm going to go against the grain here. I think I also want to sh- uh, make a, a mention as well for for John Keenan, the referee from Whitlow. He was apparently a, a good player uh, in his own right back in the day as well. He's 50. It's his first time refereeing an All Ireland hurling final. He was name checked by Fan Larkin when I was down with him during the week as a referee who lets the game flow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Has to retire after the match, which is ridiculous, because he because he's 50 years of age. He's reached this point in his career, and all of a sudden, instead of a fitness test, they're saying you're that age. Hang up the whistle, which is another separate issue for the GA to sort out. It's very black and white, and it? it seems like uh, this guy is finally reaching the the peak of his career, and it's like, nah, you can't come any further. The one thing about letting it flow, right? Um, last year it was the freeze that kept Kilkenny in the game in the first half when they were actually being overrun, but. TJ, I think, was it four or five frees in that first half that just kept the game? Mm. They was just within touching distance, mm. and, and then the goals came in the second half to get them back into it. Um, you're going for a Kilkenny win. Yeah, I, I think the start of the match last year is actually going to play into Kilkenny's hands because Limerick what, got a goal in two without reply. The start of last year's final, Gerard Hegarty scored the goal. It's rarely that that would happen twice in two years. Kilkenny would have learned from that. I, I, I have a sneaking feeling there's a, an, air of, an air of expectation around Kilkenny that wasn't maybe there last year of course they want to stop the four in a row as well and keep that 06 to 09 record intact that's important it is important I, I, I'm opting for Kilkenny Kilkenny by one to three points and because I was in his house the other day I'm going to go for a random pick Conor Fogarty man of the match for midfield Right. I mean, that block against Clare in the first half was unbelievable. Himself and Adrian Mullen have built up a bit of a rapport midfield. Do not just go with Owen Cody. You could, you could, you could. But just, actually, Mullen, I would, yeah. Obviously, TJ or Owen Cody are the obvious picks for man of the match if right. Kenny are to win. But I think Conor Fogarty is going to have a stormer. All right. So there you go. All right. Oh, the, the field is open for the two lads to pick Limerick and try and get back in the game. Fair play. Like I, Everything Shane's saying makes sense there. For me, I think it just comes down to the fact that I think Limerick have improved Like and we say they're closer now to what we were talking about at the start of the year when we were probably overrating them and, and, and being a little bit over the top. And for me, a lot of it comes down to who's my man in the match pick is going to be, which is Keane Lynch. And I think that there's something... Happening there, I think he was he looked himself or close to himself against Galway. He had that four week break after the Munster final. I think that did him the world of good. I think it completely changed the outlook, both fitness and probably even you know the the headspace. I'd imagine of not hurling well for the first time in your whole career, and that seems to be put to bed against Galway. There's a lot, a lot to improve on. I still think for it, but just looking for me for me to issue with Kilkenny is I just don't think they've enough scoring forwards I think they've got probably 
one of the best players of all time who's still playing at an unbelievable level. It's insane watching him in Crow Park the last day uh, for a 36 year old and how much ground he covers and everything like that. And they've got probably the most informed forward in the country. But after that, Martin Keown didn't hit a ball against Clare. Billy Ryan set up the goal fair enough, like, but that was off a mistake from Clare and other than that. And um, John Donnelly hasn't kind of progressed in the way that we thought he would maybe three, four years ago. And Phelan is a worker, did his job, did his job very well, but again, not a scoring forward. I think that eventually it just comes down to I can't see Kilkenny scoring more than... 25 kind of combined points and I can't see Limerick scoring less than well maybe can't see Limerick scoring Kilkenny scoring more than like 28 and I can't see Limerick scoring more less than 30, 32 so what's your that's what it comes down to so um, how many what's your points uh, I'm going to go Limerick 4 to 6 um, 4 to 6 uh, so you like Kilkenny 1 to 3 Keen Lynch yeah. as man of the match Keen Lynch Limerick 4 to 6 Will so my prediction is now the same as Mick except for man the match so hopefully these man the match bonus points are going to make quite a difference by the end of this I'm going for Garrod Hegarty for man the match big big game player as we were hearing last night huge game player I, who was who had the stats about his uh, five points and five yes. six points and five f- had finals it, so and something like six million goals and 24 gazillion points and <laughs> five man of the matches yeah so last the finals. He's a, his like, goal last year was what won it for them like yeah, last three All-Ireland finals uh, he scored two two seven points and one five not bad so he's been pretty pivotal having been quiet the in the semi-finals yeah that has been a trend and I think by Garrod's own standards he'll probably feel he's been a bit quiet compared to last year I expect him just to kind of explode to life tomorrow my concern is there as well with the Kilkenny forwards not so much the maybe lack of scoring threat with some of the other players because a good few players scored last year but it was 1.2 points my worry is that Owen Cody and TJ are not going to feel enough for the ball during the game on Sunday and if that's the case it's very difficult for Owen Cody to get into it then you start pulling them out the field you're missing that kind of threat inside Kilkenny are going to need goals because as Mick said even though Limerick scoring is down a little bit this year in all Ireland finals they've averaged 131 across the last three finals so you can almost set your watch to 30 scores from Limerick during a game if it's a case of TJ sending over nine frees like it was last year and him being so dominant on the scoring charts, it's hard to see Kilkenny uh, getting to Limerick's scoring total. And then the rest of it, I just think Limerick upped their level a little bit against Galway, particularly in that second half. And I know you can say that Galway drifted out of the game, but Limerick just looked like they were getting back to their best level again. It's almost like that little break after the Munster final did them a lot of good and they're ready to come in storming into this All-Ireland final even without their captain Declan Hannan it's remarkable that we're predicting that Limerick will win by 4-6 to six points at a time when Declan Hannan is missing and Sean Finn two of their most crucial players over the last 5-6 seasons not there in their defence but yes John Kiley finds a way of just manoeuvring players into positions they're probably going to play with 4 or 5 guys in unnatural positions in the back line at the weekend but for yeah I fancy him to win for a super 5 bonus points which I will uh, give you Ooh. in uh July 2024 will they do the five in a row ah Jerry you're always jumping ahead <laughs> it's obsessive <laughs> fives in a row answer my question yes <laughs> I think they were too okay, just one thing one player we haven't mentioned right I picked Keane Lynch for man the match he's picked Garrod Hegarty the other player last year's hurler of the year Dermot Burns right all three players not at their best yeah. all season and I think probably all had their best games of the year in the semi-final mm-hmm. if they all go to that next level that we know we're capable of Limerick run stop what about Galan? McGlan's been good all year. Not picking Galan for a no, match. I, I think Galan's going to win Hurler of the Year. Um, I think he was very, very unfortunate not to win Hurler of the Year last year on reflection as well. But I just think that Hugh Lawler might tie him up. This is the reason I'm not going for him for the match. I think Hugh Lawler might tie him up a little bit. Galan will still score seven or eight points, but it might be someone else in the Limerick team who makes a difference. All right. All right. This week's quick picks are in the books. We have one more quick picks to do. That'll be with the football final and uh, for the men's football final. Then the replays. Oh, and the replay. We'll <laughs> yeah, get ready Both for replays. The, okay. the new yeah. bonus point system next week, Jer, when Shane is still five ahead. Yeah. <laughs> hurling into anyone's game off the ball. It's teamed up with senior hurling championship sponsors Bork Gosh Energy to uncover stories highlighting the positive impact that hurling has had on people's lives. Full competition details. Check out boardgoshenergy.ie forward slash B-G-E-G-A-A.